Okay, we're going to get started this evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to America House. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm Christiane. I'm the director here at America House. Um, it's great to see some familiar faces and some new faces this evening. Um, we are pleased to welcome our very special international speaker here on the America House International Speaker Program, all the way from Washington. Kristen Hafford is one of the leading experts in gender uh, equality and women leadership in the United States today. She's the co-founder of an advocacy firm called Mind the Gap, which is, advises uh, industries across sectors about how gender inclusion can help with the bottom line of success in businesses. She's also um, traveled all over the world to over a hundred countries, helping people on the local level, on the national level, about how to improve women's leadership, about gender inclusive uh, initiatives and all sorts of things related to women's leadership and gender equality. Um, it's such a pleasure to have you here with us this evening, Kristen, and we're pleased, um, we're all very lucky to hear from her on her talk about mentorship and sponsorship. So please join me in welcoming Kristen Heffer. Thank you. Well, welcome to all of you. Uh, and thank you to the America House for having me here. It's been, um, it's been a very fast and furious two days. Um, and I'm actually thrilled to see a number of new faces tonight. We've had you know, new faces every day or at every, every talk um, and some people coming back, which is always heartwarming when you're speaking because you, you never know what people, what people think. But when they come back, it makes you happy. Um, so I'm really, really happy to have you here tonight. I'm sure all of you have had a long week. Uh, so uh, it's we're gonna have some fun with this tonight. I'm I'm gonna we're not gonna do a lot of slides. I'm gonna really have a conversation and, and talk a bit with you about both networking and sponsorship, um, or, or mentoring and sponsorship, but also networking and a couple of other areas that are really important for professional development. And there's there there are things to consider in terms of how you think about finding a mentor and finding a sponsor. So we've, we've thrown a few other little things in and we may actually even do an exercise. Um, I promise it's easy and I won't put anyone on the spot. Um, but this is the fun part and this is the last um, talk that I'm doing and it's fun because, it's fun for me because these are some very, very practical tips that, uh, that you all can think about as you move forward in your careers. And you know, I will talk about, you know, to some extent, what women need and what men need. Some of what I'm going to talk about tonight is very applicable for women and men. It's you know, it's a lot of this is about um, really forging your own personal leadership path and reflecting on where you want to go, knowing where that is, and really carving out some space for yourself to think about what's the next phase of your life, whether you're at the beginning of your career or whether you're closer to the end of your career. You know, what does the next year look like for you? What do you want the next two years to look like? What do you want the next five years to look like? Um, and this is something, you know, I try to do frequently, but since, more since I've started my own business, it's become harder and harder, and especially in the last year. Uh, and we do, some work with very senior women at times and we talk to them about their own personal leadership plan and what happens is oftentimes they break down in tears because you know they're at a very senior level in their career and they realize they've never actually given themselves time to reflect and that's nobody's fault right that's that's life and that's we're all doing a million things and women oftentimes are doing uh, two million things and so um, tonight, I hope that as I'm talking, you can think a little bit about where you want to be in a year and where you want to be in five years and what kind of plan you'll put together for yourself. Um, you know, if this was a half day or even a day, we could do that together. Um, but hopefully you'll be thinking about it while we go through some of this. So let's see. So the first thing we're going to talk about is, oh, is, is my initiative. <laughs> Uh, just briefly, the consulting firm or the organization that I, I I've been consulting for seven years, um, but I recently launched in the last year Project Mind the Gap, 
and Mind the Gap is a play on Mind the Gap, which is what they say, you know, in the London Tube, uh, where you, it's the gap is the gap between the train and the platform, and there's a voice that says Mind the Gap, so that you don't trip and fall into the crack, or trip <laughs> and get your shoes stuck, um, which I've seen happen. And so, Mind the Gap, you know, is about mining organizations for talent, and mining organizations for more money by having a more gender inclusive workforce. So what we do is we consult companies um, as well as nonprofits and other organizations, but largely these days uh, corporations to help them understand the bottom line impact of gender inclusive workforces. And so the way we do that is we work with individual women within the company. So we do a lot of women's leadership training, um, and that looks very different, and some of what I'll share today with you is, is included in some of that. But what we also do is really help organizations strategically uh, think about culture change and how do you change people's behavior within an organization, and how do you change the policies that allow for women to be retained, that allow for women to want to come back after they have children um, and still be successful. Um, and, and, and a number, of, and how do you deal with gender stereotypes, and how do you essentially help keep women and men in your company so that you have that mix of talent, and we have different chemicals in our brains as women and men, so women and men do things differently, and that actually results in a great deal of creativity and innovation when you put it together. But when you have these lopsided teams, or you just have teams of all men, or you have you know, very little, very little gender diverse leadership at the really important decision making levels, you wind up with less, less outcomes. And we see this in the research. The research tells us organizations that have more women on the boards, for example, and that's just on the board level, they have a higher return on equity, they have a higher return on uh, investment, and they have a higher return on sales. Than the, than the companies that have um, the least number of women on the boards. So the numbers are there, you know, and, and in politics, you name the sector, you know, we, we're starting to get research that shows how women are having an impact. We shouldn't have to be in a position to show that we do things differently and that we're smart and talented and need to be at the table and need to be in power, you know, have power. But the reality is, this is where we are, and so this is why I do the work I do. So the first thing I want to ask you is, how many of you, um, how many of you have been, how many of you have been to the, any of the programs today or yesterday? I see mostly new faces. Okay, great. Okay, cool. The, awesome. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> um, how many of you have have been mo mentored or sponsored in your current positions? And I'll. Sponsor, so mentoring is where you've had someone in your life, not necessarily in your organization, but you've had someone in your life who's kind of coached you on your career path, and this could be, you know, in different ways, and we'll, t we'll talk about how formal this is, but okay, so how many of you have had a mentor at some point? Okay, okay, all right, <laughs> about like 10. People, <laughs> there's always people late to the party, like, oh yeah, I did. <laughs> um, Okay, that's good. I mean, but that's a small number in the room. And how, and how many of you have been sponsored? And, and sponsored is when somebody takes a very, very active role in um, your, leadership, um, your leadership path within your organization. And so they're, they're an, a public advocate for you. So they're the one, you know, they'll talk about you in meetings or they'll um, be very deliberate about helping you move up. Have any of you experienced this? Okay. <laughs> Three. Okay. Great. So we have a lot to talk about. Um, and I realized that I didn't take a, um, a headset for translation later. It's not urgent right this second, but thanks, guys. My fault. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about, you know, is thank you so much. Um, this team is amazing, and, and they, the only reason I don't have this is because I walked into the room late. Otherwise, they always have everything prepared for me. Um, so, um, and I actually should thank, let me just pause there and thank the entire team of the America House that's been a part of 
uh, the, the whole week um, or the whole last uh, 48 hours um, because it feels like it's been a week because we've done that much work and that means if, if I'm here doing that much work they're doing even way more work to prepare so thank you guys for everything you've done uh, to, to prepare for all of these events because this is the last one yeah. okay so the first thing I want to talk about is qualities of a leader and this is important because it's a part of how you think about who you are and what you want to be in the workplace. And qualities of a leader, it, it, it goes beyond the workplace, but we all can be leaders regardless of what our title is or you know, what we do in our jobs. A leader is really about having people who follow you and who follow you voluntarily, not follow you like someone follows um, an authoritarian leader, you know, who, who, where you don't really have a choice. Um, this is about, you know, do, are you acting in a way that is, is, is something, is, is in a way that other people want to be like you and be around you and maybe emulate the things that you're doing? So, some of the qualities of a leader, um, you know, we often think of as, as male qualities because we've seen so many leaders, <laughs> you know, that are men and that's just the world we all grew up in and, um, and, and that's changing and that's changing in Ukraine which is really exciting and we're seeing, you know, um, we're seeing a new face of, of, of political activism and, and people in politics but we still see a lot of the same challenges here um, that, that women face all over the world. And comparatively, Ukraine, you know, it, it's, it's about 12%, for example, of women in parliament. Uh, the U.S. is at about 19%. We're really not doing well. A lot of people think that the U.S. is um, around 50-50 or, or way better than it is. Um, and they, I think sometimes that's why they want us to come you know, speak in different countries and there's a veneer of equality. Um, and yes, we have, a, we have some positive things happening, but we really are um, very, very far behind. And we had a, a higher percentage and we just dropped in the last election. And that's the first time that the percentage of women in Congress, our parliament has gone down in um, decades. So it's, it's a little bit upsetting for us. The global average of women in parliament is Parliament is 23%, just to give you an idea of where Ukraine sits compared to, um, to, to the global average. So, you know, and if you look at business leadership, you know, again, you see the challenges that women have in getting kind of beyond that, that top tier, that getting beyond that second level below the top tier. So to get to the top, top, ultimate, most senior decision-making positions is the hardest. But yet you always have a lot of, well, in many cases, you have a lot of women doing really hard work um, and running things, but they are not the people that are making the decisions. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, I've been really fortunate to meet with some amazing women leaders while I was here, starting with, you know, CEOs of companies on the first day. Um, and to hear from the many amazing women who've come to the program, some of the challenges that they're facing and some of the questions that they have. So let's, let, me, let me get into um, the qualities of a leader. So how, um, what, what would some of you say are leadership qualities that you, that you value? Yeah. Uh, sorry, one sec. Uh, oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, right here. Thanks, Sasha. Я зрозуміла. Відповідальність, по-перше, тому що треба бути прикладом для інших. І, по-друге, мій колектив відгукувався, коли я вміти розпізнати їх потреби людей. Неважливо, жінок чи чоловіків. Розпізнати потребу і відгук, ну, відгукуватися вчасно. Great, thank you. Uh, 
Others? Thoughts on? Российская. Uh, по моему мнению, люди пойдут именно за тем человеком, которого, которому они верят, доверяют и будут уверены в том, что uh, завтра у них все будет хорошо. Ну, это тот человек, который берет на себя ответственность, uh, умный человек, uh, надежный человек. Ну, в принципе, наверное, сильный. Mm. Great, thank you. Uh, other ideas? На мою думку, лидер – це той, хто вміє визначати мету і чітко до неї спрямує. Дякую. Great, great. Other ideas? Тот, хто вдохновляє. I would also say it's someone who is mm, flexible and a uh, open-minded because otherwise if the person is like you know this bossy leader then mm -hmm. is he or she a leader <laughs> great one more i would say also that someone who cares for people mm. who is not indifferent great great so these were really interesting answers um because most of the time, whether I'm in Europe or Africa or Asia, um, no matter how sophisticated the country is, a lot of the leadership qualities that, that women raise are actually more male leadership qualities. Um, because we see that women often behave in leadership positions differently than men. Um, and as I said earlier, a lot of us behave like men in leadership positions because that's what we've learned and that's what we, you know, we, we don't know any other way. But what we find when we have the opportunity is that when women get into leadership positions and they're really able to, um, if they have that significant power in the organization they're working in, they are able to explore their own leadership style. And what we work towards at Project Buying the Gap is to help women be able to be the authentic leader that they want to be and not feel like, they have to, you know, rethink every decision they're making and, you know, walk on eggshells, as we say uh, in the U.S., um, in order to really be a leader. And so it's interesting that some of the um, leadership qualities that you talked about are actually leadership qualities that are often found in women. So the caring for people and um, being open-minded and... Uh, that's actually something that we see, the research tells us, that women are, um, they are, they're flexible and they're not, um, what do you call it? Uh, they're not, men tend to be more optimistic and, um, you know, doubtful. Doubtful. well, women are more doubtful actually. Yeah, women are like a little, and, and the research doesn't use the word doubtful, but because women are more in tune with people's kind of how people's emotions and they can r actually read uh, people's emotions more, uh, more better, more easily. Um, more better is not a word, not a phrase. <laughs> um, they, they actually, are, it affects their decision making, right? And so they don't, um, they're not as you know ready to just forge through and make you know make big decisions. They're a bit more careful, um, and so another thing that you see is that women are a bit more conservative when they make decisions, and they're not uh, they're more risk averse as opposed to men who are much more willing to take risks. Um, one of the other things that was I think mentioned we talked about sensitive se sensitive to people's needs, and a part of this comes from women's ability to actually literally sense people's needs. Um, and so part of why I'm telling you some of this research is because many of you, and not all of you, because some of you may prefer a male leadership style, and I feel like that's actually how I've um, managed teams to a degree um, over the years and have tried to shift. But many of you, um, if you are given the opportunity, would really manage teams differently or are managing teams uh, differently than this, you know, some of these male, male leadership styles. 
And so trust is another factor that's, um, that's really, uh, women, women tend to be more trusted. Um, people also think, and people smile when I say this in Ukraine, that women are less corrupt. Um, but globally, if you look at this, you know, and we know that there are plenty of corrupt women in the world, but the problem is there aren't that many leaders, so it's easy to pick out the corrupt ones because you know, they're kind of in your face. And so um, you know, we have corruption everywhere, and we have men and women involved in corruption you know, all over the world, but women often tend to be less corrupt, and there's, there's I increasing research on this, but not, not, uh, not extensive research on this, and, and certainly is, it's still debated. Um, the some of the other sort of general qualities of a leader that um, you'll find talked about in, in leadership books, you know, some of the most popular leadership books, are being able to have a vision. And so being able to have a vision and then put a strategy to it, that's exactly right. We need, um, we need people who actually can, s they, they have a vision into the future. You know, and, and some people think, oh, well, I don't really think that way, and uh, maybe I'm not a leader because I wasn't born a leader. But no, you can, you can develop a vision and you can see beyond where things need to be today. And so that's something you want to think about as you're thinking about your own leadership styles. Another, another value of good leaders is, is authenticity. And so being able to be your, yourself and to, and to lead the way you want to lead, but to be honest and to, to, to get up and talk about, you know, maybe you're in a meeting and, you know, or or you have a colleague that has come to you and is, is crying or is sensitive about something, to be able to connect with that person and to be able to even maybe share your own story, um, but to be authentic about how you connect with people is another uh, really important value in leader. If people can see when people are inauthentic. People can, people can sense it, and especially women can sense it because we have those you know, additional sensory abilities. Another big quality of a leader is uh, to give feedback um, and to ask for feedback. So feedback is really hard to, to ask for um, and as oftentimes women can lack a level of confidence or we have an inner voice going on in our heads telling us maybe we shouldn't say something or um, you know, maybe we shouldn't speak in a certain moment. And what often happens is the idea you had is then said by somebody else. And sometimes it's said by a man. And so it's really important to speak up um, and, to, and to participate when you feel like you should participate and to really make sure that your voice is heard. Um, somebody brought up honesty and integrity and honesty is another, another um, quality that people really value in leaders. So I don't know if you know, some of these qualities resonate with you and resonate with, with your style. And again, this isn't necessarily about managing teams. This, is, this can be about you know, how you show up in the world and how you um, comport yourself at work and how you talk to other people and how you act in meetings. Um, or, or at school, how you act in your classrooms. I know a lot of students have been coming to our, uh, to our events. So feedback, just, just one more point on that. Feedback is meant to be um, sh given and received. And I, the one thing I would say to you if, you, if you can be brave enough to ask people for feedback, how am I doing? You know, how, ask your boss, ask your colleagues. You can ask the people working under you, um, if you if you have some. Um, it's really difficult to ask this question, but more often than not, you're going to find that they're saying positive things to you. And then what that hap when that happens, it helps you recorrect that inner voice in your head that might help you, that might hurt you, and, and make you be a little bit less confident at times. So I was terrified to ask my clients how I was doing, but I had come out of uh, a, my master's degree program in leadership and they told us, you know, ask for feedback, ask for feedback. And I was like, it took me months to work myself up to ask my client, my first client. And she said, you're doing great. You're doing great. You know, we, we, we'd love to do another project with you. And it was completely not what I, you know, expected. I really 
you know, I hadn't consulted before. This was seven years ago. I did, really did not know what I was doing. Uh, I mean, I knew the content, but I, you know, just managing uh, a client was difficult for me. But apparently, they were happy. Um, more often than not, you'll see that the people are happy with what you're doing. But if they're not, and and you get feedback that's negative, you you, you always want to think to yourself, thank you. You know, whatever someone gives you, whatever information they give you, because you're going to be able to change your behavior and act differently if you if you get difficult information, and you're going to be able to do more to change and to act differently if you get negative information. But if people say, oh, you're doing great, you're doing great, that's actually not that helpful. I mean, it's, it builds your confidence and you know, it, it lets you know you're on the right track. But you know, we all know those moments in life where we've had really hard information delivered to us. And sometimes it's in the form of unsolicited feedback. And sometimes it's just you know, when we get in a fight with a partner or a friend and they say something that maybe they shouldn't have, but they really think. And then you think, oh my gosh. Do people perceive me this way? Um, that's, that's always important information because we often make decisions about how we behave in the future based on them. Another uh, comment that was brought up was, was ro role models. And this is also something you know, people really value is people who lead by example. And so you know, nobody wants to work for somebody who says one thing and does another or who expects you to stay super late hours and always be at your desk and, and who's really rigid about you know, the work environment when they're actually you know, late all the time. I mean, that's, that's one of the worst kind of bosses. People really get angry because it's, it's inconsistent and they have different expectations for you versus themselves. And then another, another important quality of, of strong leaders is building relationships. Um, and this can be really hard um, within organizations. But what I'll say is women in particular are very good at networking. So, you know, women talk to other women, they talk to men, they just, women, are, it, it comes naturally. But women don't always network with other women in a strategic way. So what we find is women have relationships all over their organizations, all over their companies, in their communities, across organizations. But they're not thinking, OK, who do I need to meet in order to move up? You know, or if I want to move to this organization next, they're not, they're not being strategic about how they talk to people or actually thinking about, oh, I've worked with like Irina for five years. And um, now she, um, she might be able to help me kind of move up because she's in this other department and she's in the senior position. Um, maybe I should actually leverage this friendship to, you know, to, to, to have her help me in the company. And women don't actually seek out relationships in the companies oftentimes for strategic reasons. They're just kind of doing their thing and being friendly and talking to people. And um, so that's another thing to consider. You know, you may have a lot of long and strong <laughs> relationships all around, but are you, you know, how are you using them and how are you being strategic about developing new ones? Um, another, another really important quality is that women develop others. And so uh, part of that is actually giving credit to people when they do things. So um, oftentimes we see, you know, men are very, very comfortable taking credit for things that they've done. Um, and women are, you know, they say, we did this, even though they, like, individually alone did something. <laughs> they say, we, or, you know, our team. And they don't take credit because there's a perception that then you look arrogant. So if I say, I've been to 70 countries, and I've worked with women all over the world, some of you in this room will feel like, oh, she's like, she's kind of ar arrogant. But if I don't tell you that, and I don't say it, you're never going to know it. And that's a part of how I build my profile and how maybe I get other work or maybe I come back here and do more, more work with some of you. And, and, you know, it doesn't, you know, these are the stereotypes that we have of each other, including women of other women. Um, but if we don't own our expertise and we're not confident and tell people what we did, then, you know, it's, it, we're, we're missing an opportunity. And we're going to get way further by telling people what we did 
than by not telling them and omitting, omitting information because we, we're, we're scared we're gonna look arrogant or aggressive or like a man, which is not such a bad thing after all. <laughs> but this is how we change gender stereotypes. Um, so another, uh, there's a couple more here. Um, high emotional intelligence is something that we see among uh, really strong leaders. And emotional intelligence is the ability to understand, you know, how you're perceived um, and to be able to change your behavior based on that. And it's also the ability to see how others are perce perceiving, per how others are perceiving, uh, how others are perceived and how to help them manage them, their own selves. So women are very, very good at this. They, they, the research shows women have higher emotional intelligence than men do. Um, and so with that knowledge, you can, this is what makes women often, often good at managing teams. And you know, this also fits with being able to read people better. And that's why you see a lot of women in communications positions and in marketing positions. It's no coincidence that you have a lot of women who do marketing and communication um, because it really suits um, some of these emotional intelligence skills. But those emotional intelligence skills are really important across the board in any sector and in any position because it's, it, it requires this self-awareness and ability to adjust yourself and, and an awareness of others and, and an ability to help them. And so um, we see that uh, this is something that we can really continue to exploit. Finally, people really value, value qualities of decision making and risk taking. And women are less risk takers. Men are the ones who are really, really taking more risks and they're comfortable with it. Um, and I mean, to the extent that some of the feminist blogs will say, you know, maybe the financial crisis wouldn't have happened if you had more women in working at these big banks. Um, we won't know, you know, and that's okay. Um, but what we're aiming, if, if we had all women working at the banks, I, there could have been a different kind of financial crisis. I don't really know. I, I, uh, we were, not, we're not trying to aim for a world of, of all women in power. <laughs> we're really looking for um, how do you bring women and men together in a professional environment and really benefit from, from, from everyone's experience. And what we find is that a lot of women and men still really value a male, a male centric leadership model. And so that's why I wanted to go through, you know, what general qualities of a leader are that people value. Um, and if you interview, there, there's research, you know, on several large studies of major companies around the world and, and most of the information that I use is global and not bringing kind of all American statistics with me. Um, uh, people find that they value leadership qualities that are, that are both male and female. Um, and if you interview top executives, there's one study of top executives who say that they they actually, um, top executives that are male and female say that they've used the same techniques in order to get ahead. And some of those are more female and some of those are more male. Um, but really that, you know, people are using very similar, very similar leadership skills and styles uh, to, be sec to be successful. And some of those include taking initiative, practicing self-development, displaying high integrity and honesty, driving for results, developing others, a lot of the things that we've just talked about. Uh, also inspiring and motivating others, building relationships, collaboration and teamwork. So I wanted to start with qualities of a leader just so that we can think about who we wanna be and where we're going. But now I wanna talk a little bit about men mentorship and see um, for those of you that have been mentored, um, are any of you willing to share, you know, what that mentor did for you or what that relationship looked like? Um, just, just a couple pieces of information about what your mentoring relationship was. Was it somebody at your office? Was it somebody outside of your office? 
Did you go and seek them out? Or did they find you? Did it happen naturally? Any thoughts? Hello. <laughs> Uh, my name is Marina Rumarenka. I'm working for Dual Partners. I'm actually a CEO of the company. And uh, I would say it happened naturally in our organization. It's our HR director who is uh, in his um, manner. We actually was born in one day <laughs> <laughs> with him. Uh, but uh, naturally, somehow we are friends at work. We are uh, colleagues and peers at work, but also in many um, ways he is, uh, by his behavior, by his talks, little talks, big talks, uh, I would say doing a mentoring uh, job. He's expert in it, but he's doing with many of us, it's my colleagues as well, mm -hmm. from HR Hi. departments, who's great, both great. his. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think he's doing mentoring for many of us in the company, but in very smooth, natural, friendly way. Okay, so not really direct and deliberate. No. Um, and this is interesting because and I'm happy to have you here and to see you again. This is a female-dominated company. The, you know, and he's one, of the, he's one of the very few men there, right? No, we have, um, uh, as I was saying uh, before, we have top management uh, men. Uh -huh. uh, I'm only one woman, mm -hmm. but the middle management uh, is all women. Wi all women, <laughs> okay, now I remember. Okay, great, thank you for that. that. So that's an example of, you know, you've kind of identified somebody you can get things from and he's doing this naturally kind of on an ongoing basis. Does anybody have a different experience? Okay. We're just going to bring the microphone both for translation and because we're streaming. So shall I speak English? Or doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. It'll be translated either way. So okay. Totally uh, I guess I have a bit of different experience. Uh, so I'd say I have a mentor who's quite a close person to me. Mm -hmm. It's outside my uh, career and my work experience. Uh -huh. uh, let's say just like my godmom. And uh, she's older, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's more just talking to her and she's sharing her experience and kind of directing me. And she has helped me a lot. She still does. Great. Uh, all her advice kind of helped me to grow to the position where I am. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an English language teacher. Mm -hmm. And I started teaching at uh, school. And now I've been a private entrepreneur for already five years. So I kind of self-employed, have my own clients, and you know, planning to grow further that's why I'm here. That's great. That's, that's a great. <laughs> and she was, she, she was instrumental in you switching careers, or no? Um, pardon, could you repeat one more time? Um, was she, um, did she play a role in your, your changing from being a teacher to yes. entrepreneur? Yes, she has. Okay. So basically, she was the one who inspired me to change the position mm -hmm. and take a risk and to become an, an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, which was quite scary at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had a lot of doubts and a lot of conversations and even cried because I was scared. Because uh, it was um, all about taking responsibility for myself, finding clients, paying taxes and everything. But, you know, I guess I've been, yeah, a private entrepreneur five years and I've always had money to pay my taxes. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, this is so. actually a big deal. No, seriously, I, seriously <laughs> I don't know, just I felt so, I remember that time I felt so insecure that, oh, what would happen if I don't have enough money and stuff, but fortunately, yeah. Um, yeah. that has never happened. I had my ups and downs mm -hmm. as everybody else, but I guess now I'm ready for another step forward. That's great. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank yeah. you. Luckily, in the U.S., we get a delay. We get a little extension. So if you can't pay your taxes on the, on the due date, as a self-employed person, they give you a couple extra months. Um, but th this is great because also you took a big risk. And being self-employed is, yeah, it's a huge risk. And um, I've also cried. Um, <laughs> so, um, but this is a good example because you may not have made that switch um, if not for this pivotal moment, right? And a lot of us can think back to a time when somebody said something to you and it just stuck in your head. Whether it was your second grade teacher or whether it was a colleague, um, or maybe not. I mean, does that, have you, do you feel, do people feel like they've had those experiences? Yeah. And, and those are game changing moments, right? But that's because, well, that's why mentoring is so powerful because you can guarantee yourself more of a possibility of having those moments because you're going to actually structure a relationship to get them. <laughs> so did you have? 
Let's go. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Я слухала всіх і подумала, в мене теж був ментор, а це був мій викладач в інституті, і завдяки ним я стала ну, тим, про, ну, тим професіоналом, яким я зараз є. Однак я подумала про інше, що це не обов'язково має бути одна людина. Колись я відкрила інтернет-магазин, я його відкрила з 20 доларів. За, 5 років, о, за 3 роки він війшов в п'ятірку українського найкращого магазину в цьому секторі. Але моїми менторами були мої покупці. Вони дзвонили і казали, чого в тебе цього нема, ми хочемо купувати це у тебе. І вони розвивали цей магазин через мене. Ну, тобто, таким чином, це теж був такий ну, незвичний досвід. Дуже. I love it, that's great, that's great. So, um, so, I love that your customers pushed you. Um, and, and this is another really important point, because Oftentimes we don't, we don't look far out and say, this is what I can be and this is what I can do. And it takes other people to say, oh, you know, Kristen, you should write a book. Um, and they don't know that I'm like not a good writer. Um, and it's really flattering to say, but I've actually, ironically, I've been thinking about that lately and I've had a few people say that to me. And so people plant these little seeds. Um, and actually I went to a talk the other day and um, this woman had written a book about Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, the president of Liberia. And I met Ellen years ago and I'm fascinated by, you know, a woman being president in Liberia because it's so difficult. And so I stayed after and I talked to the author. I realized I had read another book by her and I asked her would she talk to me um, about writing. And so I don't know if she'll become a mentor or not, but, you know, I'm trying to open up that possibility for this. So what I want to do is just give you a, some pieces of advice on thinking about mentoring um, and finding a mentor. It's really important to be a mentor too. And to your point, number one is the more the better. <laughs> um, the, more, the more mentors you have, the more people you can rely on to ask for advice, who you feel comfortable with and who you feel safe with, the better. Um, and we often, I think sometimes we feel like we're burdening people. Everybody's really busy and, you know, it's we're asking for someone to take something on additional in their life. But you can define what that looks like. So you can ask somebody, I'd like to talk to you once a month or three times a month. Or I just need to call somebody when I really have um, some, some professional questions or I'm not sure you know, about a certain pathway. And it's really important to have that because, again, you know, y your, your entire career path could, could go a different way. Um, mentors can be men or women, of course, and it's really important that you decide what's best for you. So, you know, and that's depending on your industry, depending on your field, depending on your comfort level, whether you want to hear from a woman or a man. My personal advice is to have both because women can be super supportive and women can be you know, very comfortable with other women, but really supportive men can be really helpful in helping you think about uh, your career uh, in a very different way and, and you're getting a totally different perspective. So, um, and also oftentimes, you know, you, you have a lot of men that are in senior positions, so they may be in, you know, they may have a different experience set um, or, you know, be in, be, there may be more, your field may be more male dominated. So these are the questions that you really need to ask yourself is, you know, what is it you need? Do you need the content advice? Do you need, you know, if, if for women who lack confidence, um, and, I don't, and I don't think I'm out of that pool at all, you know, I think having a, man, having a man is really good because when you have a man telling you how, fabulo how fabulous you are and how awesome you are in your job and they see you every day, you know, that's, that can be really, really um, powerful for women. And I've seen this be really powerful for women. Um, so this is really a choice and it's, and it's about what's, what, what you prefer. The other thing about, I mentioned, uh, feeling like you might be burdening people, it's, it's actually strategic to ask people for favors sometimes because it shows that you value them. So it's really, yeah, it's really, um, it's really wonderful to be asked to mentor somebody. 
And so even if it's a little bit of time, this is something that can go a really long way for you and people are happy to do it and they're happy to think that you want them to do it um, because there's a reason that you want them. And so I would worry less about um, you know, burdening people and just figure out how do you structure this based on the time that you want from them and what you need from them. But it's really important to ask them. So this is another, another point is you really need to ask and be deliberate about this. And so what you want to know before you go into finding a mentor is you know, where do you want to be in, in this year or in five years, what we talked about at the very beginning. Um, and sometimes you will use a mentor to help you figure that out, and that is perfectly fine. But the more thought you can put into what you want to get out of the relationship, whether that is guidance on different career options, how to get out of a bad career situation, how to balance family and work life, how to ask for a raise, um, you know, what the best strategy is for trying to get um, to move up to the next level. Does somebody think you can be a CEO someday? I would say yes, all of you can if you want to be. Um, so these are, these are, you know, think about it first. Show that you put some time and thought into, into the relationship. Um, the, uh, and so when you, when you think about structuring the relationship, you, you also want to think about a timeline. So this doesn't have to be a forever thing. Um, and, and maybe they become your mentor forever because we see the way we build friends and the, you know, you never know what you're going to get, you know, and, and the kind of relationship you're going to build. And so you may find somebody that you wind up having this lifelong, you know, at least relationship with, even if you don't see each other often, but it's somebody you can always call. Or it's somebody at a period in your life, you know, who plays a role and then you move on and, and you got what you needed from them. And, and all of the above is fine. And so, again, this is about you and what your needs are. Um, and so your mentors can come from within your organization. They can be family members, godmothers, you know, they can be the random New York Times um, author that I saw the other day who I was scared to ask because I just asked her to have coffee by the way I didn't ask her to be my mentor um, because I don't know her so I thought let me just you know have a coffee first and I think that's a good way to test things out is to see you know what is this per like do I how does how do I feel with this person you know does this person even give me good advice or you know does you know is this something I want to ask her to do again and so these people might be in your life already and I mean if I ask all of you right now, I mean, how many people can you think of that you would want to get career advice from, you know, either, you know, in the next month or two or on an ongoing basis? How many of you would maybe already have somebody in mind? Yeah? Okay. And, okay, so that's like about half actually. So now I'm curious, for those of you that, that, that don't have somebody in mind, um, how, would you, how would you think about figuring out who that person could be? Um, so that's one question. Another way to answer that question is, you know, what do you think you need from a mentor? And I know this is, very, this is a personal question, um, and we're in a no judgment zone. I mean, <laughs> I'll speak for myself anyway, but, uh, but it's, it's helpful, I think, for, for us to hear from other, other people, you know, you know, what do you think you could get out of a mentoring relationship? Or what do you think someone else could get out of a mentoring relationship? Do you think you need, okay, let's see. Здравствуйте. Меня Марина зовут. Ну, мне кажется, это зависит от той сферы, куда ты хочешь двигаться. Если ты хочешь развивать свой бизнес, то это должен быть человек, который успешен в бизнесе, например. Если у тебя какие-то проблемы в семейной жизни, ты видишь человек, к примеру, у которого хорошо в семейной жизни, он строит свою семейную жизнь, как-то так у него получается, то это может быть метр именно в личных каких-то, в дружбе. Вообще, мне кажется, что можно в день увидеть много <laughs> таких людей, у которых можно чему-то учиться буквально, каждую mm -hmm. минуту. 
сейчас я у вас учусь, я разговариваю с девушкой, что-то вижу, что она лучше меня знает, или она ведет себя очень как-то так, что мне нравится это в эту минуту, это человек, у которого я беру пример. Мне кажется, их может быть очень много, этих людей, и они везде, мы друг у друга, мне так кажется. Great. Thank you for that. That's... На мою думку, ментор – це той, хто надасть адекватну критику позиції того становища, в якому ти знаходишся, і тої мети, до якої ти йдеш. Це та людина, яка зможе з свого досвіду життєвого зрозуміти і якби з боку да, подивитися, зі сторони подивитися на ситуацію в цілому, а не саме в тій точці, де ти запнувся і не знаєш, куди тобі далі йти. Дякую. Great. Did you say not at the point where you're... Oh, shit, I'm sorry. Did, 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 did you say not at the point where you're stuck? З тої точки, де я застрягла, наприклад, так, я прошу поради, чи е, обговорюю це з людиною, і е, ця людина може свого життєвого досвіду і професійного досвіду е, побачити ну, її з іншого боку, да? тобто побачити ті проблеми, які я не бачу. Great, thank you. Більш okay. об'єктивно. Just, uh, mm -hmm. just wanted clarification. Дякую. Thanks. Мене зовут Женя. Для меня ментор – это тот человек, прежде всего, который в тебя верит. Ну, первое – это родители. Да, они вселяют нам уверенность в себя. Второе – для меня – это мой муж. И что немаловажно, кроме того, что они дают уверенности мне в своих силах, в своих знаниях, они еще могут поставить на место. То есть сказать, они не боятся сказать, в чем я ошибаюсь, либо я заблуждаюсь. Ну, это как бы самые основные для меня критерии. Спасибо. Great, thank you. Okay, so these were some great points, and I, I want to say a few things. So, absolutely, you want somebody who can critique you. If they're going to just say, great job, great job, that's not what we're looking for. In fact, you know, it's really that hard feedback sometimes that you want to hear, because we may be looking for career advice, but we may also be looking at, you know, how do you think I talk about myself and I, you know, something more personal. So for example, my business partner, <laughs> and I said this last night um, at, 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 in the last talk, she, she's a mentor to me and I'm a mentor to her because we, we spend so much time with each other, but we're constantly giving each other feedback. And um, one of the things she said to me the other day, it was a communication thing, she said, you know, you always say you know when you're, when you're on the phone with clients. She said, it just started a couple, a couple weeks ago and you're doing it in presentations and you did it at this client pitch the other day, you, you added you know. And it makes you sound so much less confident. And so when I did this last night, I, I totally said you know after I started explaining this story because I don't even realize I'm doing it. But this is an example of a communication technique where I basically discredit myself on a consistent basis because I'll say something really important, like women should be 50% of leaders in Ukraine, you know? And if I just said women should be 50% leaders in Ukraine, that is much more powerful than if after I say that I say, you know? So, um, but the people give us advice and you can get advice from speakers and different moments in your life and I think those of us that are open to that and always open to learning from anybody, um, which is one of my values in a leader, is that you never presume who you can learn from. You know, you can learn from a two-year-old something, <laughs> uh, and we often do, um, as much as you can, you know, from somebody who's, you know, at the end of their career and retired and not even working anymore. Um, And so we have to always be open and not put people in boxes and think we know what they can tell us or not tell us. Um, and, and being open to that and being good listeners is another huge, huge um, quality of leaders. Being a listener, you'll learn so much more um, than if you are the one always talking. And that was a hard lesson for me to learn. Um, 
but the moment I stopped being the one that had to push out information all the time and I actually took in information from other people a lot more, I started to grow more because I was just hearing things and allowing people to talk and allowing people to, I wasn't trying to always connect with them and say, oh, I totally understand what you're talking about and, you know, really be aggressive about, you know, having this dialogue. I just sit back and listen. And so, um, which makes talking for two hours straight a little bit um, difficult <laughs> or an hour and a half. Um, so, a really important point, which I want to close on for, on the mentoring piece, is that we're talking about a very deliberate ask of someone to be your mentor. So yes, we're learning from people all the time, and hopefully we are, but I want to challenge everyone in this room to find somebody who, consi who can consistently give you advice and feedback based on what they see of what you're doing. Woman, man, no matter what your age is, if you're a student, if you're here with a friend and you didn't actually even come to plan to come tonight, we all need mentors. And so the difference between having somebody you know, give you advice in a moment when you're stuck in your career um, or in a moment where um, you, you, know, you might have really messed up a meeting or did something, you, know, you had a client situation, you're like, oh my gosh, like this, I'm going to lose my biggest client because of this meeting I just had. And then you go and talk to somebody who you trust. That is very different from mentoring. Because mentoring is about a very consistent, ongoing relationship that you keep and that you're, you're, you ask somebody to have, you're deliberate about staying in touch, you let them know that you're doing okay, um, and even if that's a one sentence email, you do that in addition to asking them for help when you need it. And you thank them, but they're a part of your professional journey. And so the whole reason we're spending time on mentoring is that the people who actually have mentors, and there's research on this, who ask people to, to have this relationship with them, they are um, way better off and they're able to really move in their career trajectory um, in, a, in a much more, much more easy way because they have help. And so, this go so if you develop a consistent relationship with somebody, they not only give you advice, but they may say to you, hey, you know, we've been talking for two years about how you really wanted to pivot into this other field. Well, guess who I met yesterday? I was at this event and I was talking to this man and he said that, you know, his, he's, he's having this, he's looking for like this kind of posi X position on X team and I thought that would be perfect for you. So you really want somebody who's always thinking about your needs and if it's just a one shot deal, you know, one conversation here and there, that's very different. And, and again, that's important too, but um, I guess my, qu my last question for you is, do any of you don't, are there any of you that don't think you need a mentor? Okay. Yeah? Uh, just very briefly, you see... Yeah. Uh, oh, please, can you, yeah. If you're talking about mentoring, for example, in a professional way, if I'm hired by a businessman mm -hmm. and he expects me to work, not to be coached, Mm -hmm. So if I miss a deadline or if I lose some part of a job, mm -hmm. then obviously I'm kicked out. Mm -hmm. So you see in, in these harsh uh, conditions of, of business, you know, entrepreneurs or this business, you know, there is no way of mentoring. Mentoring can be for the government, working for the government, or if you're starting some low-level level career, then, you know, they take you like uh, they want to teach you some, some professional jobs like on the spot. But if they hire you, for example, I can give an example of a translation bureau. Uh, they, they hire a translator who can work in, uh, you know, there is a translation uh, software like Tradas. Uh -huh. And they, for example, the boss says another experienced translator, teach this new one how just to type, how to make a translation memory in this Tradas. Mm -hmm. Another guy. And this guy is very reluctant to do that because if he teaches another person, a newcomer, how to appear, how to, to translate perfectly well in this Trader software, then he will take his bread. Because, you know, today there is some job, like translations. Next day, you know, in a couple of weeks' time, no job at all, you know. So he is just stealing his money out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, you know, mentoring, it means like you should be mentored when you study in college, at the university, whatever. But if you go to work, if you're a fresh comer, then up to the leverage of 30 years, then you can have a mentor. Father, I'm sorry, you know, either you're in or you're out. 
I'm sorry. So that's my perception. This is interesting. No, I, I appreciate that. Do other people agree with that or have, have other comments? Uh, have, we'll go here because you talk, go maybe to the woman in the red dress hasn't spoken and then, and then yeah, and then you. Добрый вечер. Меня зовут Ирина. У меня, в принципе, большой был опыт работы в банковской сфере. Я могу сказать, что менторства в банковской сфере практически не было. Нас всегда бросали как бы на передовую, и мы всегда как бы... Вот, мы тренировались, наверное, на своих клиентах. Вот. И потом уже этот опыт мы несем с собой, как бы продвигаясь по карьерной лестнице. Скорее всего, мы были сами себе менторами. Поэтому... Могу, могу согласиться mm -hmm. с мужчиной на все сто процентов. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. Ну, я теж згодна, що в Україні це дуже така велика проблема в цьому вому. Але є компанії, які ставлять ментора тобі, наставник називається. Тобто цілі програми наставничества для нових робітників існують. Але дійсно не хочуть, якщо нема такого, що от нас заведено, ти будеш наставником, то люди не хочуть ділитися саме через те, що я якось цьому навчився, чого я просто так маю з тобою цим ділитися. Я з цим часто стикалася і розмовляла з цими людьми. Маргарита. Thank you, thank you. Также банковский работник. <смех> видимо, <смех> видимо, у нас очень актуальна данная тема. У меня в связи с обсуждением вопрос вот по поводу менторов. Да, хочется, чтобы был ментор. Вопрос теперь, как замотивировать человека, да, в котором я заинтересована, да, чтобы он был моим ментором. Как его замотивировать, как его заинтересовать и так далее, что все-таки ну, вот, вот эта личность, которая для меня является ну, абсолютным авторитетом, э, стала ментором. Э, ну, вот в качестве, э, так скажем, типса да, э, э, вы сказали э, э, то, что если ну, только то, что ты уже обращаешься к кому-то советом, да, это в принципе его за советом, его уже поднимает в том числе в его собственных глазах, да, он, вполне возможно, это и является самомотиватором там, для него, да, чтобы он стал моим ментором. Ну, если можно, какой-то совет, а что еще, например? Что, что еще может быть мотиватором для кого-то? У меня комментарий. Я дело в том, что часто сама являюсь ментором, потому что я защитила диссертацию, осталась на кафедре преподавать. Работаю сама параллельно в рынке зеленой энергетики, и студенты ко мне обращаются за менторством. Колхоз – дело добровольное. Не надо тут устраивать подмену понятий. Ментор – это человек, который нравится. Вот у меня заведующая кафедрой, старая стена Алексеевна, она просто… Я когда пришла в 11 классе на дверь открытых дверей, мне все равно было, какой она кафедрой заведует. Я знала, что я пойду к ней учиться. Я ее заставила быть моим руководителем диплома. Она стала у меня руководителем диссертации. Она меня, она моя муза. Вот что значит ментор. Это человек, который нравится. И а, мне приятно студентам быть ментором. Я постоянно там в e-community, в разных движухах принимаю участие как ментор, потому что я люблю людей мотивировать. У меня столько энергии, что я люблю и делиться, и вдохновляю людей, я их там заставляю что-то делать, писать статьи, там, участвовать в мероприятиях и т.д. и т.п. Вот что значит менторство. Это не обязаловка. Это реально добровольное дело. И это прикольно. Менторам хочется быть, когда хочется делиться, когда видишь потенциал в человеке, когда понимаешь, что эта энергия не потратится зря. Вот что значит менторство. Thank you. I might be wrong, but I personally don't see anything wrong if you pay a person to share some information with you. No, we all work hard to we have our experience and there is nothing wrong to go to a professional and pay for something that you need. And pay for something you need, did you say? Yeah, 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 for something you need. That if you need this professional advice, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. Great. And then back, um, the back corner. Дело в том, что есть разные виды менторства. Если мы говорим о малом бизнесе, таком как бюро переводов, врачи, ну вот я работаю нотариусом, юридические услуги. У нас, конечно, все остается в семье. То есть это переходит из поколения в поколение. Мои родители, я когда росла, 
Я с детства впитывала эту профессию, скажем так. То, что касается бюро переводов, но тоже приходится по ходу дела заверять переводы. Действительно, люди не делятся своим досвидом, ну, своим опытом. Рассуждение такое, что я потратил много времени, много знаний, почему я должен это бесплатно отдавать. Но, тем не менее, у каждого из нас есть своя миссия, да, то есть мы для чего-то живем, для чего-то делаем. Это личное дело каждого. То есть если ты хочешь, ты помогаешь, если ты не хочешь, ты не помогаешь. Но все мы должны понимать, что мы живем в социуме, в обществе, и, по сути дела, мы должны помогать друг другу. Thank you. Here. These are great points. I'll, I'll react to them. Мне кажется, вот закрытие информации, неважно, в большом бизнесе или в малом бизнесе, оно бесперспективно. И а, люди, которые, ну вот в большом бизнесе, когда ты делишься информацией, это называется корпоративная этика, и от этого никуда не денешься. А, то есть если ты а, что-то знаешь, ты ну, вот, как готов поделиться своими знаниями. Вот в этом будет какая-то миссия, какая-то суть, какая-то перспективность. Спасибо. These are great points. And so um, I want to clarify a couple things and also and, and then maybe ask a few other questions, but we and then we'll we'll move on to um to a couple other areas. Um actually did I hit this by accident? Oh sorry, we were on the wrong thing. Okay, we're gonna go on this next. Um so first of all, um I agree that mentoring should be voluntary. Um, we, there's a difference between mentoring and training. And I think some of the points that, that, that we heard referred to actually training other people. And so mentoring and training are two different things. And you can be trained earlier in your career. You can be trained later in your career. You can be <laughs> trained when you get a new job. But that, those are the responsibilities of the company or the organization. And so that's very different. It doesn't mean that you may not find a mentor within your organization, um, but they also don't have to be in your organization. And in many cases, it's often easier when they're not. And I would say the majority of the women and men that I know who have mentors are not people that are within their own organizations. Um, they're people that have more experience than them, and they have something to offer them. And it's somebody that they feel safe with, but it's not necessarily somebody who sees how they work every day. So um, this is something that's really a, a voluntary thing. The second thing I'd say is um, absolutely we want to have people who can, who can critique us. Actually, I think I said that already, maybe. Um, um, and who believe in us. There's also no age limit to who can be, to who can be mentored. If you, think, if you think you can't learn anything else in life, then, then you don't need a mentor. But I would argue that, that's hopefully, that hopefully that's not anybody. You know, we're always continuously, continuously learning. So the whole point of this is to help people get on, you know, help them with their career track and help them think about different ideas of where they're going and help them step out of the space of where they work every day as well. So, you know, it gives you an outside perspective on what other kinds of jobs there are, on what other kinds of opportunities there are. Um, your, your point about, you know, pushing people to write articles and, and, and getting them excited about things, you're taking it a step further, which is really exciting, and you're helping them figure out, you know, what can they actually do to build their credibility and to, like, you know, build their credentials. And so that's really, you know, an ideal, an ideal setup. Um, the idea that, you know, it, it, it could take, it take your job away, you know, that's, we're, we're looking for somebody we're not competing with. We're looking for a safe space. We're looking for a person who supports us. And, you know, they can be in a different field. <coughs> they can be in a different sector. Um, you know, it's, it's, again, this goes back to what do you need? Do you need confidence? Do you need advice on what other careers you could have? Do you need advice on you know, women who could share with you how to get you know, to that you know, s senior level? Um, and, and if you have an ongoing relationship with people, they're gonna be giving you a lot of different advice and that's what you want, not these one-off things. On the idea of 
um, it being voluntary, it should definitely be free and it should definitely be voluntary. That's how we, that's how we define mentoring. You know, if you're paying for it, that's, you know, leadership coaching. Yeah, leadership coaching, which a lot of people have and are really effective. They're also really expensive at home. I don't know, I don't know if they're expensive here, but you know, it, it's like having a personal trainer at the gym. You're always going to pay more than if you actually just get the gym membership. So, um, and people do this because they want to help other women or they want to help other men and, they, and because they believe in them. And so a lot of the qualities that, that you all brought up earlier um, that, you know, you would want somebody who you feel safe with, this is, this is why we find this person. So if it's somebody you're competing with or somebody who's going to give you bad advice or someone who's going to say they'll be available to you and then they're not, which is what happened to me when I asked for someone to mentor me, um, these are, um, these are not, these are, that's not the kind of relationship that you're looking for. Uh, so maybe, um, and people need, people need mentors across industries, you know, um, and, and you may need a mentor because you're in a more male dominated industry and you want to understand, you know, how to kind of navigate that. I mean, it's just, it, this is really about you and your plan. So. Are there any questions on mentoring before we move kind of to the next topic? Um, we won't spend this much time on the next one, but this is a really... Um, how many of you now have an idea, by show of hands, how many of you now have an idea of someone you could ask to mentor you? Okay, so would someone be brave enough to... If, um, so, Christiane, you didn't raise your hand. Okay, you do, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so we won't call on you. Um, maybe you <laughs> it's okay if you were sleeping. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm just kidding. Her eyes were wide open. Um, the, for those of you who don't have someone in mind, I don't want to leave the topic unless you feel like you could go home and think of somebody, or are you struggling to even think of who that person is? Who feels like this would be a hard thing to do? Okay. Oh, right here, sorry. And, and while we're waiting for, for, for her to get the microphone, the thing I'll just, the one thing I'll say is, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen if you ask somebody to mentor you? They say no, exactly. Nobody dies. <laughs> they say no. And you're like, okay, that kind of, sucks <laughs> and then you move on and then you f you think of someone else right please знаете в ходе обсуждения у меня просто вот как бы возникла такая мысль вот а не рассматривается ли понятие перекрестного менторства то есть мы можем как бы понимаете на пере крестки, скажем, поколений. Вот я, мне пришла, например, в голову моя дочь. То есть получается, что мы учим с ней друг друга, мы друг для друга менторы. Я даже, наверное, больше сейчас учусь у нее. Вот поэтому вот может быть все-таки менторство существует и перекрестное? Absolutely. And this is what my business partner and I have. My question to you is, can your daughter give you professional advice and professional feedback? Is it that kind of relationship? насчет профессийных порад это я ей даю такие. А, да. А вот как бы да, как как вот вот как как подпитывать меня, вот наталкивать на эту мысль, наверное, вот она она меня вдохновляет. Она меня сейчас, наверное, вдохновляет больше всех, потому что я хочу, чтобы она превзошла меня. I love it. I love it. And so that's and maybe that's where we, we move on. But that is the difference between mentor, between mentoring and inspiration. You know, you're you, you can mentor her on the professional stuff, um, but she's not a mentor. She's not a mentor to you. If we're talking about you know how people define mentorship um, and how they're doing it in other countries, mentorship is really mm -hmm. about that professional that professional advice and personal things come in. But this is really about how are you going to get ahead in your career. And so your daughter plays an interesting role for you because she inspires you. And that's a whole other thing that we need. Um, but we need somebody who's going to chart out a map for us and say, you might want to consider these organizations. 
you might want to talk to this person because they might help you with this. You might want to join this network and do public speaking because you told me that you're nervous about public speaking. Um, you know, I think that you should, you know, call me next week and let's have a conversation about, you know, how you can move up because I, you know, I think that you've been in the same position for a really long time and, you know, you just told me that you, you haven't asked for a raise and this, you know, I, I just think this isn't a good situation for you. I think, you know, I really want to help you, you know, think about how you're going to earn more money because you told me that that's something that's really important to you. So these are the kinds of things that we, you know, that we're going to get from our mentors. Um, so how many of you think that later on you can come up with somebody to mentor you? <laughs> okay, okay. All right, good. Okay, so I'm going to talk very briefly about sponsorship um, because sponsorship is, um, it's, it's, it's similar but different in that mentoring happens privately and you know it's somebody you go to in confidence and you exchange with them and they really help you with career advice um, or maybe it's about balancing your personal life and your career um, but that's what a mentor does it's it's private it's personal and then a sponsor is somebody now we're going to talk about within your organization who basically they're usually within your organization who speaks out on your behalf and really is like your cheerleader or your champion within the organization. And you raise some interesting challenges about why people might not want to sponsor other people um, because they feel competitive with them and you know, economic issues come in. Um, but again, you wanna find somebody who, you know, maybe that means you have to find somebody who's Old, you know, way old and older than you, who isn't threatened by you, um, you know, who really will take an interest in helping you get promoted. And, and they have to really believe in you and not be threatened by you, because this is the person who says in a meeting, I think Christiane should actually take that more senior position. Since we have it opening up, so-and-so is going on maternity leave, she would be perfect for it, you know? And the people that you choose to be sponsors, they have to be able to have power in that organization because you want them to influence other people on your behalf. So this is a more public facing relationship. So the, the qualities that are similar between a mentor and a sponsor is they believe in you, they want you to, to they, they take your professional life, you know, it, it, they're interested in it and they want to help you in a voluntary way, um, and the, but the, the, there's a whole other level where they're actually able to speak out on your behalf and be really deliberate about that. And if you're not certain that somebody will do that, then that's not who you want because you need to trust them. Because the, wor the, the, the worst thing that can happen is they, they speak out against you. You confide in them, you know, and then they aren't, they aren't your advocate. So you may not be able to find that person in your organization right now, um, and that's okay. But it's, it's a really good process to think about, is there somebody who can really be my advocate who's already shown me that they care about my leadership development? You know, and so, you know. <laughs> so you, you wanna find somebody who's in your corner, as we say. Is that distinction clear between the mentoring and sponsoring? You with me? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> um, Americans jump out of their seats, you know, and, and so I just have to make sure you're with me, so I <laughs> get the, I have to ask for the feedback, and that's fine. Yeah, just check it in. Yeah. Lobby, lobby. lobby, exactly. They advocate mm -hmm. for you, they lobby for you. Um, and a mentor can lobby for you too. But th these aren't hard and fast definitions, but a mentor, somebody you go to privately, and you can, you know, get this this advice on the side. And the sponsor, they can give you advice, but they're the ones who are really, you know, helping you navigate and chart out your next move and making suggestions to you and that sort of thing. And if you're a student, it can be a professor who says to you, you know, I think you might want to use your degree in this way. 
um, you're really smart and talented and you're studying communications, but I can see that you're really good at, at design. And so maybe if you're going to go into communications, you go into the design portion instead of, you know, client facing public speaking work. Because I really see that you have talent um, in doing websites and blah, 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 right? Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, so are there questions about sponsorship or network, uh, sponsorship or mentoring before we move on? Okay. So, so networking. Net how do you define networking? Let's just start there. Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? Okay, so I'll define networking. <laughs> I, thought, I thought she was getting up to, to say something. Uh, um, are, we, are you networking tonight? Okay. Okay. Who says no? Okay, tell me why. One sec, one sec. We have to do this for the translation on this well, When you network, uh, you find new contacts that are important for you are uh, they important in your career um but here we are just having a good time okay <laughs> listen okay. to your wonderful lecture oh, <laughs> thank you thank for this you. lecture thank you thank you <laughs> is there anybody do you think there's anybody in this room that can help you with your career of course you are <laughs> no. well but but we don't know each other not, not me necessarily i mean right do, do we know anyone here? I mean, uh, I know that uh, the lady next to me, the language teacher, or I know this is my friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, but I, I don't know the, the rest of people here, so how can I use Great. their Great. talents? <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about. I feel like you have something to say. No? Okay. Later? <laughs> okay. Uh, Just uh, do, to do it uh, shortly, uh, uh, for me, networking is a development um, of relationship. And uh, once we, uh, we are in our working environment, for example, we are developing um, networking uh, uh, relationship uh, that we probably may even uh, may use uh, for our professional needs or for, uh, for our p personal needs. So it's, uh, for me, it's moving on mm -hmm. from one circle of people to the next circle of people, trying to be useful for them, uh, trying to find people useful in every kind of, 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 uh, of, of um, spectrum of your life, let's mm -hmm. say. And uh, uh, for sure, it's um, ne real networking for me is uh, as as uh, uh, we said, uh, um, it is um, 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 not not creating, but discovering <laughs> discovering the the real um, uh, the real um, um, connection. Connection. Connec uh, the real connection uh, either uh, or or uh, professional or or um, personal between people. This is actually the <laughs> is displayed <laughs> on mm -hmm. the table, as I understand. <laughs> Great. My point. great, great, great. Okay, so um, these these are these are really interesting comments, and I I would say uh, networking is talking to new people, learning from them, and building a cadre of new relationships. Um, it's also about maintaining those relationships. So tonight, you've taken the first step in networking. And so if you haven't met anybody new yet tonight, then you haven't networked yet. Um, you haven't actively networked. You, um, and so one way that we, we could have f forced you to network tonight as a first step is by every time somebody stands up, I mean, every time somebody makes a comment, they, say they stand up so that you can actually see who's making the comment and they say their name, and they say where they work. Mm -hmm. Because I bet you a lot of you in here 
have interesting commonalities. You may have people in common. Um, you may have even worked at the same place. Like you, you just never know. Um, so a first step in networking is actually letting people know that you're in the room. And so um, I was at a meeting the other day actually, and it was really awkward because it was again it was this author, this book signing, and it was a very informal event. It was very small, and they try to keep a really informal environment. And in most wa meetings in Washington, if you get up and ask a question, they say, please say your name and your organization. But they didn't at this um, meeting. And so everybody was just saying, hi, thank you for the discussion. And then they would say their question. And I was thinking to myself, this is a really big missed opportunity because I want to know who the people are that are in this room. Um, and so, and, and what I realized over the years is if you stand up and ask a question and you actually give your name and your title, people wind up coming to you afterwards because they, they realize that you are who you are or you work where you work and they want to ask you another question and then the next thing you know, you're exchanging cards and you have a relationship there. So when it came to my, my turn, I wanted to say, I'm Kristen from Project Mind the Gap because Mind the Gap hasn't been around for more than a year um, and I didn't and I know that that's not a really good leadership technique, um, but I did it because I didn't want to feel like an aggressive woman, so I fell into this trap of all the things I'm, you know, often training women on what not to do. So I thought of it later and I thought that was really stupid. Why did I do that? So anyway, the first step would be letting people know who you are. So for the rest of the night, what, what we're going to do, and we don't, there's not, not much to the rest of the night, is we're going to say our name and like you can say I'm a student or I'm not working at the moment or um, or I'm a f you can say some affiliation, even if it's not your job right now. You can say, like, I am a part of Weldy, the women's, women business group, or anything. Um, the second part is that there is a huge opportunity for you. Every time you walk into a room, you want to meet as many people as possible because you never know how they can help you. And I know that there may be a culture of people not wanting to help other people, and oftentimes everywhere in the world I go, you find women that don't want to help other women, and um, that's, that's something that we all need to get over because you never lose by helping somebody else. And you have to be strategic about that help. You don't want to help the person that's going to take over your job, for sure, and that's an important point. Um, you want to help them be successful because they're on your team, but you don't want to actively mentor them, perhaps, because you know, it's, it, it might, that might be awkward. But you can really, I mean, m I would suggest that you really consider thinking about helping everyone um, because chances are it's really not a threat. You may be perceiving that it's a threat, and this is something that, you know, um, we, you know, it, to create, you know, cultures of volunteerism and to create cultures of giving money to things, you know, it takes a long time. But more often than not, if you help someone else, you're going to be very happy that you did. They're going to be happy that you did. And then you're building your own credibility. You're showing that you're a person who can help others. And that's not, that doesn't necessarily have to be an ongoing relationship. You have to do what you have time for. So someone might say to you, I can't mentor you because I, I don't have time this year. And that's what my business partner and I said to, we have a lot of young women that come and meet with us. And, find, and we, we try to meet with as many as we can. We finally said, you know what, we're going to have a monthly meeting and we're going to do a training and we're going to have um, people bring wine and like we're just going to have a happy hour and um, we're going to, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure those people meet each other, we'll do a training and we'll, you know, try to connect with them but in groups instead of one-on-one -on -one because we could do one-on-one -on -one the whole week and never do our work. The other thing is, um, you just, you just never know who you're going to meet. So you always want to exchange cards and you always want to write on the back of the card who you met. So tonight, what I would like for all of you to do, and I'm not going to keep us too late like I did last night so that you can actually do this, but before you leave, you should leave with three business cards. And if somebody doesn't have their business card, then um, they can write their name down on a piece of paper and their email address. And if that thought is scary, I would, I would question, you know, why, you know, you know what, what's the harm in that, you know? Um, because communication is important, and if they write to you, you know, that's, you know, you, you have the ability to say, I'm really busy this week, I'll get back to you later. 
Um, but what people do all the time is I meet them at meetings, they give us business cards, and then you know we just drop a line and say it was great to meet you. And then the next thing you know, they're in your address book. And then you know if you want to send out an article, you know they're on your list. So you're building you're building an army of people around you who could help you maybe in 10 years time, maybe in five years time. Um, maybe you um, want to foster a dog and you don't know, you know where, you know, how to get into a dog fostering program. I don't know if that's a thing here. But people, like, they like try out dogs before they buy them uh, at home. And so, and I actually am using this example because I don't know where, where to foster a dog. Most things you can find out online these days, like, right? But I don't know which are the good foster programs. And I know people now that are fostering dogs, and, and I randomly met somebody who was fostering a dog, and she told me this when I met her. And so now I can go back to her and say, because she, she wound up keeping the dog, and it's an amazing dog. But this is the point, and, and one of you made it. This is about building pr p relationships with people who can help you personally and professionally. It may be somebody who winds up you know, helping you figure out a nanny um, you know, when you, when you have a small baby and oh, you guys don't have to go back to work because you get three years off. But whatever the situation is that you need, um, the more people you know, the more you're going to be able to find that can, ha you're going to be able to find someone that can help you. And that just makes life way, way easier. Please. Добрый вечер всем. Меня зовут Виктория. Я работаю в компании Туб Косметикс. Эта компания занимается поставками профессиональной косметики для пластических хирургов и эстетической косметики. А хотела бы сказать о нетверкинге. Насколько я знаю, по последним исследованиям именно малые связи или слабые связи между слабые контакты, то есть это не супер дружеские или супер профессиональные контакты, они гораздо более важны. Они важны как в личной жизни, то есть легче найти работу через слабые связи, чем через своих друзей. Uh -huh. А легче продвигать свой бизнес через слабые связи, чем через плотные контакты. Поэтому просто хотела сказать, чтобы мы все не пренебрегали слабыми связями. That's a great point. Thank you. Because you don't know if it's going to be a weak contact or not, right? That's the other piece. Other other comments or questions? Because we're gonna we're gonna wrap soon. <laughs> it's okay if you've talked talked before. Okay. I would like probably to share my experience. Uh, so I'm in uh, my personality very shy, but it's coming to work. Oh, but your name and your. I already done it, oh, but I will repeat it again oh, in sorry. new version. Okay. Marina Romarenka, I'm a CEO of Deal Partners. We are managing company for four hotels in city center of Kiev, 11 mirrors, and three sanitary apartments. So we are welcoming mm -hmm. our distinguished guest today. <laughs> I love I love the Eleven Mirrors Hotel. And I was thrilled to meet you the other day and to find out that that's who you were because you introduced yourself and told me that. Thank anyway, you very much. Uh, so uh, as I said, in my personal life and uh, from starting from school or university, I usually was really shy. But uh, uh, in my work uh, life, I started to work rather early after the school. So I think uh, when it's coming to work, to write something or to speak to other people is part of my job and it's very easy. So if coming to personal, it's too shy, you know, it's uh, difficult. But when coming to networking for business, it's easy. So I think if it's some should have advice, just uh, if you are shy, but it's leave it at home. Mm -hmm. uh, if you come into work or for such meetings, it definitely is networking because I support my network of people who I already met uh, before. I have a lot of business cards I'm ready to share. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely different story and you can feel absolutely different than you at home with your personal surrounding. Great. That's a great point. And I, and I know this is hard for, for people who are introverted um, because, yeah, it's, I know, it's, it's really hard. Um, but I'll, I'll just say, I mean... We all know what it's like to walk into a room where you don't know anybody. It's awkward. You know, you come to these events and it's like, you hope you see somebody you know, because then you can walk over to them and talk to them. But 
you make it way easier for everyone else if you just walk up to them and you say, hi, I'm Kristen Haffert, I'm the speaker tonight, or hi, I'm so-and-so, I do this. Because what you want to do, really effective networking, is about making a personal connection with people. So what you want to do is you want to not just say who you are and where you work, even though that helps with the connection, but if you could say something like, I just had a hard time driving here in the rain. Um, I, I really don't like driving in the rain. Okay, that's kind of boring, but you're, 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 you're being, you're, you're, you're showing a little bit of yourself. Um, and so another thing to do that's more professional is maybe to say, you know, I came tonight because I'm really interested in this topic. Why did you decide to come? Or how did you find out about the event at um, America House? Or have you been at America House before? But if you're that person, like be that person that just goes up and shakes somebody, somebody's hand because everybody feels awkward. And, uh, you know, and, and even when there are a lot of people that do know each other and there are a couple that don't, just go up to one of the ones that is standing alone and just say, and, and they won't, they might, okay, if maybe in, in Ukraine somebody might think you're weird if you do that, I don't know. But you'll start talking and two minutes later you have a friend, you hopefully you have a business card, and you've made a personal, con personal connection with someone. And the whole point of this is you never know whether that is you know, a weak connection that could be exploited later. You just have, you have no idea. And so people that I've met, you know, I've, I've met people like in a, in, an orga in a situation like this. You know, I'm in X country and they, they, they may have been in a training or something with me and we exchanged cards and then I get home and I'm like, oh, like someone says to me, you know, I'm trying to do, this is before when I did political stuff, I'm trying to do, you know, get some really high level business women from, you know, from Europe to come to this event. And it's like, oh, well, I met a CEO, a COO of a company, you know, that, that owns these hotels. And um, I met, you know, a woman who um, works for a cosmetic company, you know, and, and, and I have no idea if, if, we, if we will see each other again, I hope we'll see each other again. But you know, if I don't leave with their cards, I can never find them again. And you just never know, um, you know, how you can make these relationships. And so this is about being a connector and being able to leverage the resources that you have. And, and people are one of the best resources that you have. Other comments or questions? Oh, okay. We have a question from our online audience who oh, received right. it uh, at the America House Facebook page. So if you don't mind, I'll just read it out. Where can I train to become an organizer of networking groups and where to find information about different techniques, how to make effective networking? Okay, that's a great question. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have a, um, I don't know specifically here um, what kind of opportunities there are that are that are formal, but a, a couple a couple things to consider are there are often groups that are for public speaking, and so if you if 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 this whole idea of even talk, walking up to somebody at an event who you don't know makes you nervous, you know a public speaking club might be, make you even more nervous, but it might be something to consider, um, depending on what your interests are. You know, if you are a mom, a new mom, there are mothers clubs you know, that you might want to be a part of. Um, there are community events like this where you can come um, and learn something and meet new people. And so the question I would ask um, this person online and all of you is, you know, let's go back to your, your, one, your, your one year goal or your five year goals. You know, if you think from a professional sense, where do you want to be and what do you want to do? Then that can help guide you in terms of which meetings you go to and which, um, which organizations you spend time with, um, because then you're going to be able to learn more about um, a particular topic that you're interested in, and you're going to also l meet other people that are interested in that same topic. So you can be strategic about where you do your, your networking. Any other questions? Okay, up here, and then we're going to go over here. Okay. Hi, I'm Sasha. Thanks for the lecture, by the way. <laughs> it's really and interesting. And are you, um, and what do you do, or what? I'm a teacher. Okay. I work for the British Council around my own school. 
Okay. Here's my partner as well. Okay. And Again, what's your like, last name? <laughs> Pinchuk. Okay. Oh, but sorry, I'm not okay. related. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, I got a question about managing information because over the time you end um, up having lots and lots of these business cards. So what do you do with them? Do you create like the whole database, you know, with comments in, w in which case you have to address these people? Or like how to manage all this mm -hmm. information? It's a great question because it's an added task, right? And who needs that? Uh, let's hear the second question and then I'll answer. And then we'll, then we'll wrap because we need to get out well, of the building. Well, it's not a question, it's uh, like a okay. comment. Uh, hello, my name is Jane. I'm a student. Um, What's your last name, Jane? Huh? Your last name? Um, my last name is Savchenko. Okay. Great, thanks. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that why you people don't say their last names? <laughs> um, so, um, in my opinion, networking uh, may also help uh, to change uh, yourself, uh, change your mind, uh, and uh, all uh, your um, character um, points of uh, view that uh, they're not so uh, pretty good. So, what I mean. Uh, I mean uh, that um, you know, when you're not sociable, you often think that uh, people are uh, also not uh, sociable, they are unreliable, they are not kind, they are strange at all, etc. And, uh, in, uh, and uh, I'm almost sure that you will meet such people because uh, it, uh, because you're um, because it uh, tells you that you're s such a person too, and um, now when you notice it, uh, you're asking yourself, you're asking yourself, well, what's wrong with it? Uh, why uh, I have uh, so much uh, strange people around me? <laughs> yeah. And um, you're starting to change immediately, just uh, because of uh, networking. You uh, try to. Um, uh, build uh, many new communications, many new. Uh, relationships, and uh, then uh, you will change your personality. Great, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Thank I think you. that's a, a good note to, to end on. Um, it, it opens up our world, it opens up our opportunities, and you know, it's, it's for me, I mean, do you, or I'll ask you, do you think that it became a little bit more interesting when people started saying their names and where they worked? Yes. Right, because you know, you got a texture of who's in the room, you know? Um, and so, and I actually think a couple of you, I mean, you said you worked for a bank earlier on, but I mean, that even gave me, you know, when you said you worked for a bank, I, you know, immediately thought about the context of where your questions were coming from. So, you know, it doesn't mean that we're all gonna know each other forever, um, uh, but please, before you leave tonight, um, go up to three people and just say, Hi, my name is so-and-so. Um, my favorite thing about tonight was, or I work here and my, sorry, my name, I work here or I'm a student or whatever, or I'm not working, um, and I, my favorite thing about tonight was X. Okay? So I'm gonna get in trouble because we're gonna have to get out of the building soon, so um, please make your new friends with haste. Um, <laughs> Maybe friends, maybe not friends, but who knows. Um, and thank you so much um, again to the America House for, for bringing me out here. It was awesome to be back in Ukraine um, for a third time. You are very assertive and powerful women, even though um, you may not all think of that, uh, think that you're leaders, and um, because it's, I, I really enjoy coming here because you're some of the strongest women, actually. And I should have started by saying that. And we're really happy to have more men in the room tonight, too. So thank you guys for being here. Okay, have a great night. Thank you.